Here at GCN, we want to showcase some of the best climbs in the world. We want to inspire you where to ride, tell you what time of year is best to ride the climbs and everything else in between. Now this time, it's the legendary Col de Tourmalet. I've had the opportunity to ride this sensational climb and I watched on as the Queen of the Mountains was smashed. In this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know and why this climb should be on your bucket list. The Epic Tourmalet was first featured in the Tour de France back in 1910 and has been featured more than 80 times since then, making it the most used climb in the Tour de France in the world. And it's also been featured in the Tour de France Femme Avec Swift and will hopefully be featured in many more years to come because it's a climb that makes for some fantastic bike racing. It is also the highest mountain pass in the French Pyrenees, making it a sacred place for all cyclists and a climb all cyclists should do before they die. Here's some quick fire facts on the climb. There are two ways up the climb, one from the west beginning from Le Saint Sauveur and one from the east beginning from Sainte Marie de Campan. I rode up from the east so that's the side I'm going to be chatting about mostly in this video. Now the elevation gain from the west side is 1,404 meters and from the east side it's 1,267 meters. The average gradient for both sides is 7.4. The maximum gradient on the west side is 12% and from the east side is 11%. I'm now going to chat about the east side of the mountain. Both sides are equally as epic, but the east side is definitely my preferred side. Now the climb starts off really nice and gradual. The early slopes are only around 4% and it's on a nice valley road. It can be quite tempted to get carried away on these early slopes, but remember there's a long way to the top, so pacing is key at this point. Around the seven kilometer mark, there are some beautiful waterfalls that are worth stopping, admiring, taking some pictures, or maybe even catching your breath. Because after this, the gradient starts to ramp. You do have a few hairpins and some tunnels to distract you, but it is gonna get a fair bit steeper from here. At around three to four kilometers from the top of the climb, you reach a village and a ski station called La Mongi, and this is 1,800 meters high. One thing to bear in mind is, depending on what time of year you go, not all the cafes will be open. In the winter, when it's ski seasons, all the cafes will be open, but say in the summer, maybe around 60 to 70% of the cafes will be open, but I went in the summer and there were some delicious cafes. After Le Mongi, you can just about see the top of the climb, and this is my favorite few kilometers. You can see the top, it feels like you're in the mountains, in the clouds, and the last 500 meters of the climb is pretty tough. It does get quite steep, but it doesn't matter because you're so close to the top. And once you get to the top, make sure you have a well-earned rest and take in the beautiful views. The views from the top can be breathtaking from both sides of the mountain. You'll often be able to see cows roaming around and you should be able to spot the giant of the Tourmalet monument in memory of Octave Lapis, the first rider to cross the Col de Tourmalet in 1910. There is also a cafe and restaurant at the top if you fancy that too. Personally, I think the summer months are the best time to ride up this climb. I rode up in June and the weather was great and the roads were relatively quiet. The descent is also another reason you should climb this climb. It is amazing to descend. But on the way down, the weather did change very quickly as it can do in high mountain passes and the visibility was poor and it got quite misty as well. So I would recommend taking a spare jacket and some lights just in case that does happen. Having said that, if you are a racing fan, why not choose to ride up this climb when there is a race on? You'll then get two for the price of one. You'll get to ride up an iconic climb as well as seeing some of the best bike racers in the world ride up the climb. You can ride up a few hours before the race comes, find somewhere along the climb to sit, soak up the atmosphere, and then watch the race go by. Now, we can't guarantee that the Tour de France or the Tour de France Femme Avex Swift will come up the climb again, but it has been featured a numerous of times before, so it's quite likely it will be coming up the Col de Tourmalet once again. Now, if you are wondering what the fastest times up this climb are, we have them here. 
Fastest male is Seb Kuss, pro rider, in a time of 46 minutes and 15 seconds. Rapid. And then the women's, it's Eileen Gardner in 55 minutes and 34 seconds. Now, we did actually do a video of Eileen taking this record. So, after this video, why don't you go and check that out? Now, obviously, they are very fast times, but if you were wondering what the average time was going up the Tourmalet on the east side, it is one hour and 48 minutes. So have that as a target when you're going up. So there's a summary of the Col de Tourmalet, but if you do like the sound of this iconic climb, you might want to head over to the GCN app and check out our documentary that goes into great depths on the Col de Tourmalet, and it's definitely worth a watch. But let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this video, and if you have plans to ride this iconic climb, and how you got on.